With the advent of Excel 2013 came a new function, a very useful new function, that will actually allow you to display the formula that is currently being used in a cell. So if we take the formula display working file, we have here a simple sheet which has a formula in to work out whether someone has passed or failed, and then a graded that works out a little bit more complicated whether they've passed merit or distinction. Now at the moment, you can visit a cell to find out its formula by double clicking and we can see the formula displayed. But then I can go to the next one and do the same thing, or the next one and do the same thing. Or I can actually get the formulas to display on the sheet by doing the little toggle switch that we've seen previously. But what I can't get without our clever little new formula is the result of a formula and the formula to be on the screen at the same time. Well, that's all now changed. This is the result of our formula that we can see, or we can look in the formula bar to see the formula. If in the adjacent cell, I then use this new formula, which is called formula text, and all it needs is a cell reference, and it will return the formula text. So that is the formula being used in this cell here. And like all formulas, it's relatively referenced, so I can replicate to the bottom of my list, and I can see then the actual formula that is in play. This is extremely useful because it's good for error shooting obvious errors because we've moved down, the relative cell references should change and they do, so there is no problems. If we look at the graded sheet, the formula here is much, much more complicated and much longer. If I were to put it here, I would have to widen seriously, so I'm going to put it over here. It's the same formula though, equals formula text of that cell there, return, and you can see it is quite a long formula. But if I replicate down, it quite happily copies down. Now, because this is a formula looking at a formula, if the formula in here changes, this will change because it will update. If I were to change the label for fail to not pass, then you can see that it changes not passes the label. And in our formula, we can scroll far enough to see, we can see it says not pass in there. So I really do quite like this formula. It only has one downside, and that is if you try to use the formula, I'm gonna do it here, and point it at a cell that actually doesn't have a formula in it. So it equals formula text of that cell there, return, I get a hash NA. So if it's likely that the cell you're wanting to point this formula to might at some stage not contain a formula, then we need to use an if, and say equals if is formula, which is a nice new useful little function. That cell there, then go ahead and work out the formula text. Otherwise, let's return a little label, and our label says no formula. I've pressed return just a little too early there, and what it wants to do is add on the close bracket for the if statement. Very kind of it, thank you. No formula. So even though there's no formula in that cell, I might want to use the formula text as a troubleshooter, really, because what it allows you to do is to check if a cell contains a formula, and perhaps it should. If it does, it will then write out the text of the formula. If not, it will write out my user-defined error message instead of hash NA. So this is the first ever use we've seen of if, where we demonstrated that if is used to hide error messages. And it works just as well here because it allows me to put my own message. So that's the new formula, formula text, for displaying formulas of a cell on the sheet. Combine that with the is formula function to check whether the cell actually contains a formula in the first place, and we have two very useful little tools.